Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Well, we got some really big news out of Otoy. They just released an alpha version of Octane Render for Cinema 4D, which contains Gaussian splats. So I'm not gonna explain too much about Gaussian splats. I'm gonna assume that you know what they are. They have this alpha version, it's not an official version, but I haven't had any stability issues with it, so take that with a grain of salt. But go ahead and install that if you wanna play around with them. So Gaussian Splats, it's a, basically a way of scanning something. You can do it with just a video, then you can bring them into a program called PostShot by uh, Jawset, and it basically makes a point cloud of that object and then assigns color data to it, and then you can save that out. And it's sort of like a 3D model, but it renders way, way faster than a 3D mesh. It's uh, pretty phenomenal how fast you can render them. It's almost real time. All right, so here's Jaw Set Post Shot if you're interested in playing around with making your own. And really quickly, I want to shout out Spencer Dickerson over on X. Spencer actually works for Otoy and he's been getting deep into Octane with uh, Gaussian Splats and he even uh, scanned this himself. So he's got some great information and some tutorials on it. So I'm gonna put a link below to him. So this is actually a scene that Spencer gave to me. It's like a demo scene for Gaussian Splats. And like I was saying, it's almost real time. So you can see how fast it is to navigate around, to pick your focus. And you can also see how realistic this is. It's pretty incredible. So this technology is starting to really take over and become a bigger part of certain workflows. So it's really fun to be able to play around with. All right, so a couple things to note. Let's go to our Octane Live Viewer and let's go to our objects. You'll see that we have our Octane Gaussian Splat object here. All right. The first thing to know is that their Gaussian splats come in a format called .splat, .splat, and you cannot use those, but you can use the format which is .ply. If you go online, there's some great free resources for splats. Um, this is a Hugging Face site, I'll put this below also, but this guy has uh, scanned a ton of different splats and he's giving them away for free on his site here. So these come as .splat, .splat files, so you cannot use these natively in Octane. However, it's really easy to get them converted. So there's a really fun Baby Yoda splat here, so we're gonna download that. And you can see that it is a .splat, so I'm gonna open that up in my folder. And then if you go to a website called Supersplat, it's superspl.at, Supersplat, there is a converter here. So we can drag our Baby Yoda right in. And you can see that we have our Baby Yoda point cloud. He is upside down, but we're not gonna worry about that. And then you can literally just go to File, Export, and go to PLY. So PLY is the format you want. Click Export, and we'll save that out. All right, back in Cinema 4D, we're gonna go to that Gaussian Splat, and we will just load up that Baby Yoda right here and we have our splat loaded. Now let's uh, fire up a render here. First thing, you're gonna notice that it's not framed up. If you can't figure out where it is in your scene, there is no visualizer in the current alpha version, so you can't actually see where the splat is, so it's a bit frustrating, but I have a couple quick workarounds for you. The nice thing is it is on their roadmap to add a visualizer, so in upcoming versions, it should be a lot easier. One thing you can do is click on your splat, hover your cursor right here and hit S, and it'll kind of frame it up. So if you've lost it in your scene, you can't find it, you can frame it up. All right, a couple things quick. First of all, it is upside down. If you go to the Gaussian Splat, you can go to this flip axis and uncheck that and it'll flip it. You'll also notice that once in a while when you play with the settings, you need to refresh your render and then it will show it. All right, so like I was saying, it's hard to visualize a camera move or see it in your scene. So one thing that you can do is just add a cube and then you can visualize where the cube is in your live viewer here and you can kind of just position it right where that baby Yoda is. So if you put it right around the baby Yoda, we can kind of have this be a proxy object for it. And if we take the Yoda splat and we put it inside the cube, what we can do is turn that cube off so that it's not rendering, but we can still see it in the viewport here. And then we can go to that Gaussian splat and overwrite those settings by making these green. Then we'll be able to see the Yoda in the final render, but we can see our cube here. That way we can kind of rotate our cube, we can move it around the scene. We can also visualize our camera moves. And if we have this in a cloner, it'll be a lot easier to see where everything is. There are a few settings you can play with. One is to change the lighting mode so that it has power and color. So it's a bit more accurate. It's gonna blow out the lighting so we can change the intensity here and drop that down. Go to say 0.3, maybe 0.2. And then we can change the shadow strength. We can kick that way up and change the shadow ray offset, increase that a little bit. 
Let's hit refresh on that render. All right, there's one last thing that I forgot to mention. If you make the changes here and nothing shows up in the render, nothing changes, that's because you actually have to put an octane render tag on this object. It's a bit counterintuitive. You would think that since this is an octane object, it would recognize it, but you actually have to right click on here. You have to go to extensions, octane render, and add a octane object tag to it. And you can see that instantly after I do that, it's starting to accept shadows. All right, so then we can go to our Octane Daylight, and if we go to the coordinates and rotate this, you can see that the shadows are indeed working. And there you go, you got yourself a Gaussian Splat Baby Yoda, which I bet you didn't know you needed, but we all need this today. All right, huge shout out to Spencer again. Give him a follow if you want some more information on Gaussian Splats. Otherwise, thank you for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.